Hello, you're watching Swipe from a rather secretive yet pretty famous research lab. Coming up on this week's show. Will tries out the latest in high-tech helmets, allowing pilots to see through planes. I step inside a simulator for a new kind of flying lesson. And we're stringing you along in this week's Games Review. Welcome to Swipe. This week, from behind the scenes at the UK's largest defence and security company, BAE Systems. Now, a lot of the tech being worked on here is highly sensitive. And they don't normally let cameras in, so lucky us, we've managed to get access, although we can't show you everything. But we can give you a glimpse of what the future might look like for pilots. Here's Will. The modern fighter jet is packed with technology, and pilots rely on it to give them the edge. But before anything makes it into the cockpit, it needs to be tested and developed in places like this. One of the most important tests is called shake and bake. It involves extreme temperatures and massive vibrations. We're taking an item, we're going to bolt it down, we're going to shake it to ensure nothing literally will fall off, so nothing is loose. Uh, make sure there's nothing inside the uh, unit. We call it FOD, foreign object debris. In addition to that, we're going to take it up and down in temperature, so there's some stress that goes through every item we put through this particular test, and that, that test is important. One of the latest developments to come out of here is this, Striker 2. It's got a special camera to help improve night vision and a digital display which should help you see through the aircraft. A tracker system keeps an eye on where the pilot's head is, and the range of information on display should mean they don't have to look away from the horizon. It's already been tested in a Eurofighter Typhoon, but it hasn't been used in combat yet. If you have a digital display there, it means we can put sensor information, so that can be situations like uh, an infrared picture, uh, it could be uh, an imaging pod, it could be a radar display, it could be whatever, whatever ultimately we like. And if clearly you've got a sensor located around the aircraft, if that happens to be underneath, then you can give the impression that the pilot is essentially looking through the surface of the aircraft, even looking behind him. BAE is also working to improve head-up displays in aircraft. These systems provide crucial information to pilots and are designed to make them feel safer in the air. But as technology becomes more advanced, are we in danger of relying on it too much? If you imagine, uh, for example, the typhoons on quick reaction alert, if they had a, a high-tech helmet that was made bespoke to the pilot, what happens if that helmet goes unserviceable en route to the aircraft for a scramble or as you plug in uh, and start the engines, then there needs to be robust backup plans uh, in place. Technology within this industry moves almost as quickly as the aircraft themselves, so working out what will take off in the future is hard to predict. Will Sargent, Sky News. Now, Will's not the only one getting hands-on with the tech this week. Stay with us coming up. I'll be getting to grips with a unique kind of flight control system. But first, here's a mini roundup of this week's news in tech. WhatsApp now has more than one billion users. The messaging app launched six years ago and allows you to share text, photos and video. According to Forbes, more than half of its subscribers joined up over the last 21 months. WhatsApp was bought by Facebook in 2014 for £12 billion. EasyJet plans to test out hybrid planes that use hydrogen fuel cells. The technology should mean aircraft don't have to use jet engines to move around on the ground. It works by capturing energy from the plane's brakes when it lands. The budget airline thinks this could save it up to £24 million a year. A project on Indiegogo wants to make you aware of invisible threats in the air you breathe. The team behind the Air Visual Node say it's the world's smartest air quality monitor. They claim indoor air quality can be up to five times worse than outdoors. You can also join up to its global community with other users tracking air quality trends. If you've got a cat that goes missing for days on end, then this might be perfect for you. Sorry, I couldn't help that. TabCat is a tracking device that fixes onto your pet's collar. It links up to a handset which guides you to him or her and apparently you can track up to four cats at once. Time has come to reclaim our world. Stick around for a full-on battle with aliens in this week's Games Review. Now, I've come on board a flight simulator to have a go on these. They're called active inceptor sticks. And luckily, 
I've got a handy co-pilot here, Phil, who's our expert. So over to you, Phil, how do these work? Okay, so if we start flying, active interceptors um, use a geared motor di to dynamically change the field force characteristics of the stick. What that does is provide dynamic feedback to the pilot dependent upon the mode and condition of the aircraft. Is that you moving the stick now? Because I'm not. It is, yes. Yeah. So these sticks are also electrically linked. And what that does is provide improved situational awareness between the pilot and co-pilot. Where that's advantageous is within the commercial environment where these sticks are now being used on um, new civil aircraft. OK, so these sticks at the moment are on military jets and soon they're going to be on commercial planes. But why would you need to link the sticks of pilots on commercial planes. Surely they sit next to each other, they can talk to each other, can't they? They can, but again, it's all around situational awareness. So between what the pilot and co-pilot are putting inputs into the controls, so enabling them to both see what the other is doing and feel what the other in, is doing provides better situational awareness between the pilot and co-pilot. All right, so does that make everything a bit safer then? It is all about safety. From a commercial standpoint as well, in the past a number of aircraft used column and wheel controls which means the controls sit straight in front of the pilot. With using side sticks that allows them to free up the space in the cockpit and gets greater um, views of the displays as well. So do you have to decide before a flight who's going to have the upper hand effectively, who's going to have the control because you're still in control of this one aren't you, luckily though. Yep, there is pilot in control button which is used to decide whether or not the pilot or co-pilot are in control of the aircraft but at any point in time one or the other can take control of the aircraft. And what do you think of my flying right now? I think it's very good, maybe you can get a, a new job as a pilot. That simulator felt a bit like playing a video game which makes a rather nice segue into this week's games review, here's Andy. Unravel is a puzzle platformer in which you play as a little guy made out of red wool called Yanni. And Yanni, he escapes from his, uh, his creator's house into various uh, photographs that she has of places like gardens and the seaside. And they're on a much sort of larger scale because Yanni's so small, so you'll find yourself um, adventuring through a garden full of giant insects or the seaside full of giant deadly crabs. And uh, it's a puzzle platformer, so a lot of the solutions to puzzles are based around your ability to manipulate the environment, things like uh, the rising tide in the seaside, you'll be using floats to create platforms for yourself. It sort of reminds me of a less relentlessly bleak Limbo, if anyone played Limbo. It's sort of like that, but a bit more colourful and a bit more cheery. So XCOM 2 is a new entry in the uh, tactical, turn-based strategy XCOM series. And this one is set 20 years after the last XCOM game. So the last XCOM game had you dealing with an alien invasion as part of this uh, military group called XCOM. The world you once knew is no more. Now the aliens are well and truly in charge and the XCOM is a kind of a resistance group and you're very much on the back foot, which sort of changes the dynamic quite a lot. Uh, the levels in this one are procedurally generated, so there's a wide variety of environments you to be fighting in, and there's a lot more emphasis now on time, so you'll have to make tactical decisions a lot more quickly, and it kind of forces you to make quick decisions and be a bit more reckless and a bit more risky with your strategy, which is something I think strategy fans uh, are going to enjoy. So Dying Light is a first-person zombie game that came out uh, towards the start of last year, but it's now getting a massive expansion called The Following, which moves things out of the cities of the first game and into a sort of big, expansive countryside. And the big change that they've done for this, apart from the fact that uh, the environment is a lot more open, is they've given you a vehicle to move around in now. You've got a buggy, uh, which you can use to, to drive around, and that really changes up the way that you play, because before it was a lot about parkour and moving around the city using your arms and legs and jumping around whereas now it's a lot more about driving so it kind of it changes up the way that you play the game and also you, you spend a lot more time running over zombies rather than just hitting them with bits of wood but uh, Dying Light was uh, a great kind of sleeper hit from last year and it's really good to see more from that game. Well now that everyone's gone home it's my turn with the helmet. See you again next week. Bye bye.